Hey, well, thanks everyone for joining us for this week's Mortgage Matters with Chris. I'm here with Chris Galley, uh, branch manager, vice president, loan officer himself uh, at Novus Home Mortgage. And you've got yourself, you have a little over 25 years of experience in the industry. And you don't do this alone, though. You do this with your wife, who has just about the same amount of time of experience as you. So, uh, Chris, we know you provide a great service to your clients. And uh, we appreciate you being here this afternoon to share with us some changes that we've got coming up um, that for once are good news for home buyers. How often yes. do we get that? Uh, you know, I think this year we, we're getting a bunch because the markets have, has been beating everybody up this past year with the increase of interest rates. So I think it's due. I think we're all overdue for some good pluses. You know, I think next week we'll talk a little bit about some of those awesome changes with FHA and uh, some of those uh, mortgage insurance premiums getting dropped, which is going to save people a lot of money. So there's a lot of positive things going on uh, to help stimulate our purchase market, maybe get um, people to list some homes. I mean, you know, we're low on inventory. So a lot of it's been a little bit gloom and doom over the past year, but I think we're going to start seeing a little bit of joy and happiness moving into this 2023 so i'm excited and this is a really exciting topic as well because you know yeah. as you know in our industry um specifically people tend to get gifts when they're buying a house what rather whether it's uh for down payment closing costs and um a lot of the times and you know the people that are given the gifts may not know that there's uh some great tax exemptions um that could be applied where it's tax-free money and or how much even better than that, just how much is actually tax exempt uh, on their gifts. So not just based on a yearly basis, but on their overall lifetime exemptions as well. Yeah. Well, Chris, so we've, you know, in the past couple episodes um, that we've had, we've been talking about a lot of the new changes coming down. Again, a lot of these positive ones, like we don't, we don't usually get to come on here this often and be like, good news, good news, good news. Uh, but what we're seeing is that home buyers and potential home buyers seem to be very thirsty um, for information on, uh, uh, I guess, stepping stones and things that can help them get into their home. And that kind of falls in line with what we're talking about today, which you had hinted at gift funds. So yeah. I just want to open this up and say, you know, the reason we're talking about this right now is because obviously we're still kind of fresh into the new year. Uh, and there was a change made from the IRS regarding those gift funds. Um, and again, change for the positive. They actually increased the amount that a person can receive uh, from an individual or family member, which you'll talk about more. Um, but they kind of bumped it up this year, which the reason this is good news is because if you've got home buyers who are needing that help, um, they now have more room. I should say, to uh, receive the help that they need uh, to get into their home. So that being said, Chris, can you explain to us what is a gift fund in terms of how does it relate to mortgages? Well, in a lot of cases, you know, we see a very, it's very common for a parent or a grandparent to gift their kids money for either A, the down payment that they have to put down on the house uh, or down payment and closing costs. Um, you know, and, and one of the things is, is, you know, we always get the question, well, what is, you know, is this, is there going to be any tax implications to me? Um, and, and as I'm not a financial planner or a state attorney or anything like that, I've been doing this long enough to kind of give some good overhead um, answers to these questions. And I always, again, on disclosure, because we're on, we're on tape here. I would, I would definitely, anything I'm, I'm saying, I, you know, go to your financial planner, your state attorney, your, you know, tax preparer and ask these same, same common questions. But what we're sharing with you today is the increase to $17,000, okay, which would be free of any tax implications, which is a huge thing. So back in 2002, you know, it was around $10,000. And since two, two, I think it was 2002 when I, when I hit the 10 grand, I was, I remember that because I was in the business. I'm like, wow, people can get tax exemption. They give gifts. 10,000. It's been slowly increasing. I believe last year, I think it was 16,000. This year, 17,000. So it's just it's just helping people that are gifting the money to be able to 
have a tax exemption. And and it's my belief it doesn't necessarily have to be a family. It could be friends too. So this could be a gift from a friend. Um, making these annual exclusion gifts, it allows people to move money to family members, friends, so that it's out of your taxable estate with no you know, state of taxes or, or gift tax consequences, which is a big deal. And I think that's what we'll find you know, more people that are getting educated on this, maybe there's other avenues, you know, as far as where you're going to get the gift. So as far as we're concerned on the mortgage side, it has to be an arm's length. So it has to be within the family parameter. So it's, it's usually, you know, mother, father, sister, brother, grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, I think it's like eight. Um, and that's kind of where you're, you're wrapped into. Um, so, you know, just keeping that in mind, but if you're giving gifts outside of this, outside of the home buying purchase, well, there's some good tax exemptions available for you. And that one time gift per person, you know, can go up to that 17,000. And I think really where it can even be even more advantageous is that if it's a parent, in some cases they can each give 17. So it could be a collective amount of 34,000. Yeah. Uh, for their the, year. The, the way that the law actually reads is it's per person to per person. So if you got mom and dad, you could have, you know, up to that limit coming from each of them as a gift to you. Um, and then this doesn't happen often, but let's say there was an instance where you're buying a home with like a sibling or something. Um, each parent, for the sake of example, each parent can give each sibling, you know, up to that exclusion. So it kind of compounds um, if that's something that someone needs. So like, for example, say you have 10 people in your family, right? And, um, you know, you can gift out the 17,000 and this say, this would include your children, your grandchildren, in-laws, whoever that is collectively in that one year, if someone was looking to get that tax exemption, they could technically throw off that 170,000 rather than waiting till they pass away. It will then be giving while they're living, which is pretty awesome. I think most people think about giving their, what they're going to give at time of death. And at that time of death, sometimes there's tax implications of depending on how it's set up. So if, you know, your family members have this money sitting somewhere, this is an opportunity for them to give while they're living one. And it's coming over to these people as tax free for on that top of that money. So kind of to wrap it up in a way where I like to keep it simple, say, you know, grandma saved all this money. And she had all this money in her account and then she had, it was dispersed after her death. Well, in some cases there'll be tax, you know, consequences, if you will, that you wouldn't get that full amount that you could have got if it was being passed to you year to year as you're going. And maybe not every year, maybe here or there, again, big purchase of a home. That's a good time to give a gift, right? And not have to wait until, um, you know, time of past death or, or whatnot, you could get it ahead of time. And I think it would probably, you know, feel a lot better for the person that's giving it if they get to give it alive because they, right. they actually get to, to see the reaction of the person receiving and they know that there's not going to be a tax consequence to it. So yeah. it's, it's like a win-win for the party receiving and for the party giving because they're, they know that the person that they're giving it to gets to receive the whole amount and not a uh, consequence to a tax hit or bill, if you will. So let's talk about gift giving, specifically in terms of when someone is buying a house. So we know that this can be used on a lot of different programs. Conventional mortgages uh, allow, now they've got some you know different rules and stuff, but they allow for gift giving. Uh, the big ones are USDA and uh, FHA and VA loans. All of these programs uh, have provisions in them that allow home buyers to seek help from a family member to get that down payment if it's required. Correct. So, I mean, as long as it's within a family member, they can give it whatever they want. I mean, I've seen family members give 50% for a down payment. Um, now, a seller, I, I think people confuse this because they hear about a seller's concession versus a gift. And, um, I just want to clarify a seller can only give a certain amount based on what type of loan program. So for example, 3% on a conventional loan, a seller can give back up to 3% for 
for a seller's concession. And then with a government loan, FHA can be up to 6%. And some of those things are changing. But your family, your family wants to give you $50,000 um, to put down on their down payment. They're, they can give that. Um, you know, obviously check with the account on tax ramifications. But the other nice piece to, you know, the, the, the exemption for taxes, um, you can do the lifetime. There's a lifetime exemption. And right now that even went up. So... If you look at your lifetime exemption amount on the overage, you can give up to, I think it's 12920000 this year. And um, the thing that people got to think about is that is for 2023. I believe in 2026, it's supposed, it could be dropping to as low as $5 million. Ooh, that's so big lot, implications. A lot of people don't know that. So they're going to be adjusting it for inflation. So, you know, given those changes ahead that we see coming in, it's a good time to start thinking about ways to increase the monies that you can gift to the next generation free of taxes. So, for example, you have a bunch of family members that you're going to give this money to and say you have that you're counting on this $12 million that you can give in your lifetime. I know that we're talking about the half a percent of people that have that to kind of give. But they're out there and they're listening. And if you're some of my realtor partners who deal with the high-end listings and all that, some of those families have that kind of thing. But this is a lifetime. So, you know, maybe they had this $8 million or whatever it was that they, you know, and they're getting up in that age. Well, they could say, you know what, if it's going to be dropping to $5 million, now would be a time to offload in the next three years as much of that cash as I can. So for that example, I said earlier for the family that you got 10 people in your family with your children, your grandkids, you know, in-laws, whoever it is that you, you're going to give some money to, and you're going to give that maximum amount that you can in a year, which is 17,000. Well, you can get offload 170,000 a year, you know, tax-free to kind of whittle down back to that 5 million. That'd be a nice problem to have to try to solve for some people. Right. But but again, well, that's, a good, that's a good tidbit, though. What's kind of come in planning coming down the, the pipeline? Uh, Chris, can you so you can clear, can you clarify for us when it comes to using gift funds for um, home buying? So obviously the big thing is that it cannot be repaid. Like the um, donor, meaning the person giving the funds, has to typically write a letter stating this is a gift. I'm not expecting a repayment, things like that. Um, but it's what? Gift. Is, yes, it's a gift. It's you used a gift. to have a term. But I'm not going to get into it now, as we used to say when we were kids, if someone gave you something and took it back. It, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't true. I'm not going to say that because I'm not going to not gonna get it, insult anybody. But a gift has to be a gift. You're not going to give a gift and then expect something back in return, especially payment. Because it has to be really The good news is it can be used on, so like it's, it's, we just out of habit say down payment gift, but it's not just down payments, right? Because like USDA loan, if you don't have a down payment, you can still receive gift. What are they using it for? Correct. They could use it for closing costs. Um, you know, so. a lot of people don't factor into when they think about buying a house. Yeah. You know? So, so for example, I mean, I'm going to use Florida because that's you know we we work a lot in the New England states. We do all you know 50 states right now. We lend in, but my main footprint is the northeastern states and then also here in the southern states do a lot in Georgia and down here. So the costs are a little bit different per state. So I have, I do find a lot of times when people are moving from the Northeast down, um, there's a little bit of a payment shock because the cost, there's a couple different costs that you don't have up North. So these are things people aren't factoring in. So that money you have to bring to the table can add up really fast when there's an extra $5,000 you weren't expecting in your closing costs. And you have to bring you know, if you're bringing 5% down on a $400,000 house, that's 20 grand. And you were thinking your costs were going to be under 10 and it's 13 or 14 or 15. That's an adjustment. So those people that are gifting the money, and it doesn't just have to go to down payment. They can just give, okay, I'm going to give you 30,000 and whatever, whatever the down payment is, is there. Whatever's extra, will just go down towards the down payment, you know, outside of losing costs. But well, I guess that makes us extra thankful, one, with the what could be a sticker shock, which is the closing costs. But two, with the increase of home prices over the last year, I think we're extra thankful that the gift limit got increased. 
um, you know, allowed for more uh, more assistance from family than it did before. And it might be it might be too for those people that are getting the gifts and those living gifts right now. With you know with the different changes, who knows what the numbers can be twenty years from now. So say they want to give the gift, the max gift to someone this year, they could hold it off, give it to them right this year, and then they can give the next one next year. So right there would be 34,000. You know what I mean? So if you gave in December, you could have gave again right now in January or if now we're in March, but right now this year. So this is every single year. So even if you had to give those monies up front and maybe if that person just held it in the account, it's a way for the people, the gift doors, in that sense, to get that that taxable, you know, that non-taxable gift out the door without having to pay on it. And and believe it or not, there's a good enough people out there that don't want to pay the tax on some of these annuities or whatever that they're coming in. And they may have extra money. They maybe live simple and they have a certain amount of stipend that comes in every month. Well, they can gift it off. And whether, again, whether or not they're using it to buy a house, it's still a, a gift while they're living that they're going to end up leaving people anyways. And again, I think it's it's nice to be able to see the smile on the person's face that you're gifting to rather than them getting something when you're not here. I mean, there's two different things, and I'm sure the person that's receiving it appreciates it as well. Well, one program that uh, allows for the gift funds is the FHA. And as you teased before, that's what we're going to be diving into more next week. So I want to let all of our viewers and listeners know uh, to check back on that because there were some pretty major changes uh, to the FHA uh, loan program. Again, it's another good news for home buyers, but home buyers can't take advantage of it if they don't know of um, what the changes are coming. Chris, in this upcoming year, the market has changed so much. We are finally in the year for the first time home buyers or the people who would be qualifying for the FHA loan to get into their home. It has been a rough couple of years for those particular, that particular group of people, but um, it's finally coming up for them. So I just wanted to tease that a little bit um, to let everyone know that uh, we'll be fleshing that out some more. Um, and we'll be upcoming. flushing it out a lot because I'll tell you, here's a little bit of a a hint, a little teaser for those going to tune in next week. In some cases, this was happening way back in the past, and there's some cases that it made more sense for people who are putting down a lower down payment to go FHA because even with the MI payment, it because it was so much less, they were saving a substantial amount of money monthly. So I'm excited to talk about that next week. So if you're around having your lunch, just tune in tune in because we just want to add some value and some good information to you so you can just put those arrows in your quiver and you, when you go out there and you're looking to buy a house or even some other things in life um hopefully we can arm you with some good information well chris thank you for being here today thanks everyone for tuning in as a reminder if you didn't catch this live you can always find this uh later on on youtube as well as your favorite podcast platform and we want to remind you to don't forget to subscribe and like the video because that's what's going to bring it back around so that you can see the good, uh, the good content that we have um, in the next upcoming weeks. So, Chris, thank you so much. Thank have you. a good weekend. All right. Until next week. All right. Bye, everybody.